What's up guys? I'm not a big do math in your head type of person. That is usually where mistakes happen, especially if you're taking a test or a quiz. If you've ever seen me make a mistake on a YouTube video, a lot of times it comes into me trying to do some calculations in my head. However, for the sake of time and when you get through high school, there are some certain problems that as a teacher, we kind of want you to get to a level where you can do some basic math in your head. And in this video, I want to cover the top 10 problems that I would expect you to know to be able to do in your head. Okay, so in this first example, we have some basic fractions. I know students don't like fractions, but ladies and gentlemen, one important thing to remember when we are taking fractions and we are dividing them, remember it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So three halves divided by one half is the exact same thing as three halves times a two over one. And then just remember when you multiply fractions, you're going to multiply here straight across. So in this problem, we can think about this in our head as a three fifths times a two over one. And the math here is not that difficult. You just multiply straight across. And we obviously should know how to multiply three times two, which is a six and five times one, which is just going to be a five. Okay, now this is one that comes up all the time. And I don't want you to get stuck with being able to try to add and subtract fractions. Usually multiplication and division of fractions, you know, and multiplication and division of numbers, not too bad. For whatever reason, when we're dealing with integers and fractions, students just like tense up. And a lot of times they might get the problem wrong because they forget how to address a problem like this. The main thing I want you to understand is when we are dealing with integers and fractions, always convert your integer over to a fraction. Now, we don't just want to convert one into any fraction, but it's really important to understand that one rewritten as two over two, three over three. But what we want to do is we want to rewrite as a fraction with the same denominator, right? Because remember, adding and subtracting fractions, we always have to have the same denominator. So when I'm thinking in my head, when I immediately see a one or plus a three fourths, I'm immediately thinking, well, this is just going to be four over four plus a three fourths. And then just remember when you are adding fractions, you're not, you're just gonna be adding uh, the numerator, you're keeping the denominator the same. So I immediately look at this and I think four over four, and then I say four plus three, and that is going to be a seven fourths. Okay, simplifying radicals. Again, this is something that typically when we're doing some more difficult math problems, this is something that needs to take a quick amount of time. And whenever I'm looking at a, a radical, I always wanna think what is the largest square number that evenly divides into my radicand or the number under the radical? So we know I can't take the square root of 59, right? I could take the square root of 49, which would be seven, and this problem would be really easy. But in this case, I still want you to be able to simplify radicals quickly. So what I wanna do is think about the largest square number, not just any, the largest square number that evenly divides into 50. And if you're thinking 25, you are correct. Now, again, I'm gonna write out the math, but again, this is a lot of things that I'm thinking in my head. I can rewrite this as a 25 times two. I know I can take the square root to 25, which is going to be five, but technically what you're doing is you're thinking of, all right, this is 25 times the square root of two. I know what the square root of 25 is, that's gonna be five square root of two. So when I'm doing this in my head, I'm basically just thinking, all right, 25 is gonna go into 50, square root of 25 is five, what is it going to be left over? That's going to be two, and the answer is five square root of two. Okay, now this one, I kind of debated on this one. One thing that happens, a lot of students when we're learning how to, like our multiplication table, we get up to, you know, we know how to multiply our square numbers up to like 10, right? We know nine times nine is 81, four times four is 16. But a lot of times once we get into bigger numbers, students just don't remember what, you know, 15 squared is or, you know, 16 squared or 14 squared. I think those are really, really, really important, especially also too, if we want to be able to multiply some deviations of that. Like if I had like, let's say 14 times, you know, 15, or anything like that, like knowing your square numbers not only helps you simplify radicals, but also helps you doing some larger digit multiplication in your head. So I think it's really important to know what your square numbers are, at least up to 15, and then even going to the 20s and 25s, I think are gonna be, you know, just really important. It comes up quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit, but it comes up enough where I think it's, it gives students a helpful baseline to understand where kind of, you know, the numbers stand. So 15 times 15 is simply just going to be calculating your square numbers, which is going to be a 200. And 25. Okay, now the last one is going to be rationalizing the denominator. And ladies and gentlemen, yes, we can always work through this, right? And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm going to work through this step by step. But again, once you do enough of these problems, I want you to be able to do this math in your head. Because if you're consistent with it, you know what you're going to do, it's not too bad to really kind of calculate what's happening. So if I need to get the square root off the denominator, I'm gonna multiply by the square root of three over the square root of three. So therefore, now I'm gonna have a two square root of three over square root of three times square root of three is going to be the square root of nine, which is simply just going to be a three. But again, looking at this, I can just multiply whatever's in my denominator, multiply that on the top and bottom, and then you can see that I easily go ahead and get to my result. So ladies and gentlemen, these are the top five problems that you should definitely know how to do in your head. If you decide to do them in your head or work them out, that's up to you, but I hope this video was helpful.